Right now, most electric car drivers are wealthy enough to have a house with off-street parking and their own charger. They only use public chargers when travelling longer distances. But what if you live in a tower block in Glasgow? Or New York? Or even Nairobi? The electrification of transport will not help solve climate change if chargers are only located to serve the needs of the world's richest and most profitable EV drivers. Really one of the biggest barriers to EV adoption, which is making sure that we're going to have the infrastructure not only available in certain areas for certain people, but globally to support like the full transition um, to electrification in all markets. It's COP26 and researchers from the Global Sustainable Mobility Partnership are presenting their findings on how electric vehicle charging policies can help accelerate the transition to zero emission vehicles by making access to charging as equitable as possible. Some of the key findings of the report are that you need the right type of chargers in the right locations with the right business model. For example, you might want a large number of standard chargers for on-street parking where residents might park and charge overnight. And rapid chargers at hubs with other amenities like shops, leisure facilities and restaurants so that drivers can charge in an hour or two whilst doing something else and ultra-rapid chargers at key points on travel corridors, such as major road intersections, so that long-haul travellers can carry on with their journey after a 20 to 30 minute break. The study found that the faster the charger, the more profitable it can be, so the private sector are delivering ultra-rapid chargers on travel corridors. That helps the wealthy EV drivers operating away from home, but not poorer communities who don't have their own driveways. Public charging is typically most expensive and public fast charging is the most expensive way to charge typically. And if you just let the market do its thing, then you're going to have the lowest income populations will be the most heavily dependent on that expensive public fast charging. Another big issue for the adoption of electric vehicles is that chargers put a lot of extra strain on the electricity grid especially the ultra-rapid chargers. So policy needs to provide a framework to manage the right infrastructure investment. If we just leave this rapid, ultra-rapid charging to flourish, they are the ones that require most power from the grid and therefore have the greatest impact on the grid, needing more reinforcement and so on. Whereas if you can make the slower charging proliferate, it's much easier and gentler on the grid and so can work within some of the current grid constraints. Another area that the report looks into is how existing and developing charging technology will enable the adoption of electric commercial vehicles, including buses, refuse collection and goods vehicles, which are vital to the decarbonisation of transport. The commercial vehicle is, sector is different. Um, it, what has worked on passenger cars doesn't necessarily work uh, for the commercial vehicle side. It's much more sensitive to economic factors, operational factors and technological risk. The report was commissioned by the Zero Emission Vehicle Alliance, which is a coalition of regional and national governments working together to find the best ways to decarbonise transport. To find out more and to read the full report, go to gsmp.world.